April 12th, 2021. And I still remember the first time he looked at me. You see, everything was shut down. We stayed home a lot. Things were great. Until. That we were fast approaching a time when we could safely remove restrictions. That's where the trouble began. I just, I just want to go out, iMac. And I can't take you. So what if I never worked in a coffee shop my entire life and I want to go there just because I saw somebody on Instagram doing it and I bought this turtleneck from them just so I could do it for the vibes. Oh my God. Then new MacBooks, more utility, more portability. It was game over. I tried my very best to be portable. But hey, your time too will come. Mac Studio? What's that? It's the curse of the tech reviewers. So if you haven't watched the first intro that I did for this whole storyline, pause this video, go ahead, check that out, and then come back. This intro will make a lot more sense. <laughs> okay, so workflows, right? That's what I wanna talk about today. So I've been using both like a desktop setup with the iMac or like a Mac mini, but I've also been using like the entire laptop setup kind of just hooked up to like an external monitor docked as well as, you know, just using the laptop, period. Which one do I prefer? I mean, that's an important question to ask before you buy any computer because both of these work styles are completely different and you wanna make sure that you're getting the right computer for your work style. So we're gonna talk about the pros and cons between each of these and let's delve right into it. So having used both the iMac as well as the Mac mini for the better part of a year, I mean, here's some of the pros and cons that I've noticed. Firstly, this kind of just lives on your desk setup and it kind of just stays there. Unless, of course, you sometimes take it back home to work and that has happened before. But like, I mean, it kind of lives on your desk for the most part and that's good in a sense because it creates the separation between work life and like family life and having like a dedicated desktop setup that you come to work at and then at the end of the day, you can just literally just walk away from it and that's it. You don't have to look at it again. And especially if you're in content production like me, then a lot of your work hinges on social media and because of that, it becomes increasingly difficult to draw those boundaries between work and home and having just a dedicated setup helps. Now, another problem with laptops is there's just a lot more moving parts, right? It's just how they were made. For example, this hinge, right? And then you have the screen and then you have the keyboards and the keys and everything like that. There's a possibility of all of these things getting messed up. And especially the fact that you're carrying this around like in a backpack or, you know, you're throwing it around at home and stuff like that. If it gets banged up or something, you could potentially, you know, have like a memory failure or something like that. So those chances are there. And if you're in a professional line of work, that might be a little bit of a risky situation to be in so good idea to always back up if you're using laptops so yeah overall you just have to be a little more careful with these things because they are a little more delicate compared to a desktop that kind of just lives at your desk next is battery longevity and overall laptop health especially considering that if you're using the laptop docked it's like constantly being plugged in to a computer and a charging source you see traditionally laptop batteries are meant to be charged up to like 80 percent and then you use the battery down to like five percent or less and then you charge it. That's like a healthy battery life cycle for a laptop. But in this case, it's constantly plugged in and so it's constantly being charged all day while it's at a dock. So technically it should affect battery longevity, but I mean, anecdotally, I've been doing this for the past decade now and I haven't really noticed like a noticeable difference. Now, of course, your mileage may vary depending on which laptop you're using as well as which OS. For example, Windows laptops, when I use them, I do tend to see like over time a battery deterioration that's a little more pronounced compared to MacBooks. Um, but nowadays, I mean, with the new MacBooks and stuff like that, like the battery life is just so good. You're already getting like a full day battery life. You know, if you chop off like even one hour over like three years, then it's not really gonna make that big of a difference in my opinion. Next is scaling issues. Now this is something that I've personally faced many times when I've been using like laptops and MacBooks docked to like a hub uh, and connected to a monitor. So as soon as you connect it, sometimes you get like this like weird warping issues or scaling issues. And to the point where I've had to troubleshoot it or even restart my computers like many times over the past several years. Now this problem has gotten much, much better now with the later versions of Mac OS and the later laptops and you know, 
monitors that I've been using versus with a desktop, like you just walk up to your desk, like just press a button and you're good to go, right? You don't have those weird warping and scaling issues usually, so yeah. So that's there. Now, traditionally desktops have also been a lot more powerful over time, right? You get better specs, you get better thermals usually, and that allows you to basically maximize your workflow and get the most out of your machines and your setup. Now, don't get me wrong, like the new MacBook Pros, for example, the one I'm using, absolutely more than enough for pretty much a vast majority of the people out there. But there are certain cases where you need even more power. And in those cases, usually it's a desktop that's gonna be able to provide that. Like for example, if you wanted the M1 Ultra chip, right now the Mac Studio is the only way you're gonna be able to get that. I mean, desktops are traditionally going to be one step ahead. Even take IO, for example, right? Desktops are, tend to have much better IO, many more ports, and supposed to be the best case scenario, right? But I mean, nowadays, like, especially props to Apple for the new MacBook Pros getting SD cards. I mean, that's all I really need. HDMI for the occasional, you know, parents asking you to like flash up like your old wedding photos or something on the screen, you get the HDMI there. And then you also get the SD card for your general working case scenarios. Okay, now let's talk about the laptop life. You see, with the past several years with COVID and stuff like that, my ability to be flexible in where I work had been severely impacted as with everybody else around the world. Just using like an iMac or like a desktop setup, it kind of made sense at that point. But now as restrictions have eased, I find myself wanting to go outside and work more from like coffee shops and like other places. Sometimes you just need to leave the current environment that you're in to go find inspiration or motivation to do certain tasks. And furthermore, as responsibilities and stuff like that around the house increase, you know, with like kids and all, um, you know, just having that flexibility of taking your laptop and just working or editing from home is, is invaluable to me at this current stage in my life. And the limited mobility of a desktop is further exacerbated when you have to travel. You can't, you can't travel with a desktop, right? Secondly, having everything in one place is great. I don't have to make sure to download like, you know, the required files and stuff like that that I need. I can have that peace of mind that if I have an emergency or if I need to do something immediately, then I just have my laptop in my bag and I just have to work off of everything on that one computer. So having all of that in just the main computer that you're using in the studio and you have access to that outside of the studio is also pretty invaluable. But by far the best thing about a laptop is the fact that you can have the best of both worlds. You can just use it as a laptop, but you can also just dock it and then get the same entire experience of, you know, having a bigger monitor, you can have speaker systems, external peripherals and all of that. And you can have that all being powered by the laptop. And also I love the whole one cable solution that we've had for the past few years where you, all I need to do is just plug in one cable and have that plugged into like a dock. And that gives me access to everything. I absolutely love Thunderbolt for that reason. And here's the kicker. Once you've done all of that, you can just close your laptop, unplug it, and, and you don't have to be worried because it's fully charged. Okay, so let's conclude on all of this. The best solution for you can only be decided by you because you know what's your work style and what works best for you in your current situation. For me personally, the whole laptop docking situation is what works best for me currently because it just offers me the best of both worlds. I'm able to come to the studio to use the big monitor and everything like that docked, but also I can use it on the go when I'm outside and I have this whole same computer and when I'm traveling and whatnot. So that sort of flexibility and peace of mind is very precious to me and the M1 Max, Max MacBook Pro has made a lot of this possible because it gives me the amount of power that I need in a laptop chassis, which makes all of this possible. But here's the thing to keep in mind. Not everyone watching this video, like you may not be somebody who needs to video edit on the go, right? And in that case, you can very well use something like an iPad, for example, in addition to a desktop in order to supplement any other thing that you need to do when you're away from your work desk. The only thing I need my laptop for that my iPad can do is video editing. Other than that, like, you know, whether it's photo editing, whether it's scripting, whether it's, you know, managing my business, you know, away from my desktop, I can do all of that on the iPad. So maybe in your situation, if you don't need video editing, that iPad desktop combo also works pretty well. In any case, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, found it beneficial, then please go ahead and like this video, share it with your friends and family, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, stay blessed, peace. But it's funny, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> and I bought this turtleneck from them just so I could do it for the vibes. This is good. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do it again.
If you guys are looking for like a brown extra in any film set, I'm available. My contact's gonna be, you know, in the description down below.